Are you using both LearnDash and Elementor Pro on your site? And do you want to give your users an easy way to add feedback or give you suggestions on your course material? Well, I'm going to show you how to create a simple feedback button that uses Elementor's pop-up feature and allows users to submit feedback in a simple, easy way. So stick around and let's jump in and take a look at how this is done. So there's really about three different parts to making all this work. The first part is we have to create the pop-up that we want to use. The second piece is we create another simple template that just has a button that we're going to insert later. And then the third step is actually inserting that button, or really that LearnDash, uh, sorry, that Elementor template uh, into our LearnDash page somewhere. Now you can put it in a lot of different places. At the end of this video, I'll show you code that I use to put it at the bottom of every single lesson page but you could choose to put it in a lot of other places and trigger it with other links that you have throughout your site. So first, let's take a look at creating the pop-up. So we navigate to templates and pop-ups in our WordPress admin area. You do need Elementor Pro in order for this to work, so pop-ups are only available in the Pro version. It will not work with the free version of Elementor. So once we go to pop-ups, I'm gonna pull up the pop-up that I've already created and walk you through it. You, of course, would just create a new pop-up and give it a name so that you'll recognize it in the future. I've called mine Course Feedback. So I'm gonna edit with Elementor and I'll show you the different parts of how I created this pop-up. So here's the pop-up itself. Um, I added some basic styles, uh, some rounded corners and, and uh, gauge the width that I wanted this pop-up to have. I adjusted the, uh, the background here. All of your general pop-up settings um, are gonna be available down here on the settings button. So you'll see that you've got some layout options. You can adjust the width of the pop-up, uh, the positioning of it. I just put mine in the middle of the screen, both center, uh, horizontal and vertically centered. You have the overlay, the close button, which is up here. You have all these different things that you can adjust. And then you come over to the style tab and you can adjust some border radius, background colors, border, box shadow. You can change the color here of the overlay. I've just got a nice uh, translucent black. And then you can change the style of the close button as well. I've added a uh, red color here on hover of my close button. So you can do all of that there. You can also uh, come here and do some more advanced stuff. I'm not gonna get into that. You guys can look up other tutorials about how to create uh, elementary pop-ups. But that's uh, on the settings tab here. Now what I did was I created a heading tag up here that just says feedback suggestions. So that will stay the same uh, regardless of which lesson they're on when they trigger this. And then what I did here was I created two columns uh, in this next section. This one I just called lesson. So for me, I don't have any topics and I'm calling all of my lessons lessons. So uh, that's why I put this static text here because it's not gonna change and every single piece of content in my courses are lessons. You'd wanna be careful here. If you rename your lessons to modules, you can obviously change this to module. Um, if you have both lessons and topics, then uh, it's gonna be a little bit more tricky. You may not wanna do this at all. I thought it would be helpful for the user to see the name of the lesson, just to reinforce that they know they're giving feedback on that specific lesson itself. They're gonna click the button from the lesson page, but I just wanted to reinforce the actual name of the lesson. So that's this next column here, which is a dynamic field. So what I did here was I used the, the actual heading widget in Elementor, um, but then what I did was instead of just putting a title, I'll go ahead and close this out and show you. So here you can type in a title for your heading, but there's this dynamic tag right up here. I went ahead and clicked that and said post title. So that's gonna pull in the actual post title. Now right now we're previewing this, it just says course feedback, but this will actually pull in the dynamic name of each lesson on each and every page. So that's how I did that there for that. And then I just put in a simple text editor that just gave them some instructions that if they had feedback about the specific lesson, that in the box below. You can put an image here, or you can get creative and put a whole bunch of stuff. In terms of feedback, I recommend not really being that creative, just keep it really simple. Um, and then what I did here was I'm using Elementor Forms. So I added a form and um, I did a couple of fields here. Now I'll explain what I did because all that the user is gonna see is one box for feedback. But as an admin, when this gets submitted and I get an email notification, I wanted some more information. So that's why I created some additional fields. So this main feedback field here, it's a text area field. 
um, didn't really do anything different to the way it's set up by default. It just is this typical text area field. So that's all the user's gonna see. But then I added, um, oh, I'm sorry, actually, the user's also gonna see this footnote that I created. So that's this text down here that just says, we're not gonna guarantee a response, but we've got their email address on file, and we'll do our best to get back to them. Um, this is totally optional. This is something that I wanted to put here on my site. You may or may not want something like that. Uh, totally up to you. But if you wanted to add additional uh, text or HTML to the form itself before the submit button, you would use, uh, you, when you add a form field, you would choose type HTML, and then you can put whatever you want in here in this little area. So that's just what I did there. The other fields I've got here are name and email. So I wanted to receive this information as an admin but I don't want the user to see it anywhere. So what I did was I created uh, hidden fields. So you change the type to hidden, and then I gave it the name there. And then when I come over to advanced, um, this value here, I added this default value of user info, again, by using that dynamic tag. So let me see if I can remove that. Yep, here we go. So you click on dynamic tags, you scroll down and you find user info. Then you click on user info and you get to choose which field you want. And so I did display name. Um, my display name contains the first and last name of the user. So if you don't have that, you may want to add a couple of fields here and do first name and last name specifically or just first name. Uh, totally up to you. So I've got display name there. Um, and then on email, I did the same thing, created another hidden field. But this time on user info, when I click on it, I choose the email field right here. So that's just gonna to show to me as an admin when I receive that email notification. Uh, and then finally, there's the submit button. You can come here to buttons and you can change the name on the submit button. I have submit feedback. You can choose anything you'd like. You can add an icon to the button if you want. Um, all the kind of cool stuff you can do in Elementor, you can do there. And then actions after submit. I'm doing two things. So one of the um, beta features of Elementor Pro is collecting submissions right in your WordPress admin area. So I'm going ahead and doing that as well as sending an email. So when you put email here for an action, it gives you this additional email piece. And this is where you can set up the two, uh, who it's going to go to. You can put in multiple emails se separated by commas. And then you can have a subject line and then you can customize your message. So by default, this all hyphen fields short code is just going to spit out everything. So this is going to include even those hidden fields that the user doesn't see here on the form but using all fields is going to include it in the message that gets sent via email to me as an admin. And then your from email, from name, reply to, all that kind of good stuff. Um, and then I also am including some metadata, the date, the time, and the page URL uh, as well. So I know exactly what page they submitted it from, and then um, the date and the time that they sent it as well. And I think those are only the things, the only things I changed, uh, except for additional options. I do believe I changed the success message here. So you have to turn on custom messages, and then if you want to customize the feedback message, once they click Submit Feedback, a small message will appear below that button, and this is the message that they'll get. And so I customized this to be a little bit more personal than it was by default, um, and just said, thanks for letting us know. Um, there's also the Style tab for the form for all the different things in here. I'm not going to go through the different styles. Uh, you guys can look up, again, a bunch of different tutorials and... and uh, style things however you'd like. The final thing we should do before we publish this pop-up is we should come down here to the arrow right next to the update or publish button. And let's take a look at the display conditions, the triggers, and the advanced rules. So for triggers and advanced rules, we don't need to make any changes or enable any of these. We are gonna trigger this on our own through a button. So we don't need any of these automatic triggers like page load or scroll or any of this kind of stuff. And we don't need any advanced rules um, you could come in here and choose to set some of these, but for a feedback form like the way we're using it, I don't think any of these apply. So if you want to, go ahead and enable some of these if you really think it matters, but I would recommend not enabling any triggers or any advanced rules. However, for conditions, I do think it's important to set the conditions on where you want this to show. Um, I think this will help make sure that no code gets output on pages that it doesn't need to. So for me, I'm only doing it on all my lessons. So I'm going to include it. Um, I chose singular, which means each individual lesson page. And then I chose lessons as the post type. For you, uh, you might have topics in here um, or modules if you renamed it or something of that sort. Or you could even do it on course pages if you wanted to apply this 
and instead of do lesson feedback, do course feedback. You could do all singular courses and then just leave this set to all, which means every single one. Um, you could additionally start typing in the name of a lesson here or a course here and it would just show this uh, pop up on that specific lesson or specific course. But we want it on all of them. So make sure you come in here and just set your display conditions. It's always a good idea to do that just to keep your code as clean as possible and make sure that it's only using this code on the pages we want to use it on. Uh, you can go ahead and save and close once you've set your display conditions. So that's, um, that's the creation of the pop-up form. So make sure you publish it when you're all finished. Um, I'm not going to update anything here. I didn't make any changes. So I'm just going to exit back to my dashboard. So that is step one. We create the pop-up. Now, step two is kind of optional. So what I chose to do was I created a simple template that I wanted to then insert into all of my lesson pages in focus mode. Um, if you decide you want this pop-up to be displayed elsewhere or use a, a different button of some kind, you don't need to do this. But I thought this was a really good way to organize things. So I created just a simple template. So you would click add new, create a new template. You would create a section uh, type template. We're not going to do a page. We're not doing a header or a footer. We just want to do a section. So that's what I created here. And let me show you what I did. So all that all that is in this this template is a button. That's the only thing here. Is we just have a simple button. We gave it some text. I put an icon there, and uh, moved it over to the right for alignment. Adjusted the size a little bit. I think I messed with the typography a little bit there. Um, but all we have is a super simple button. Now, the big piece here that makes this work is the link feature. So instead of just putting a typical hyperlink to another page, what I did here was use the dynamic tags and said actions pop-up. And once you do that, then you click on pop-up. You want it to open the pop-up, and then you search for that pop-up that we created in step one. There it is. You go ahead and click on it and we're all set. So this, I will show you in step three, how to utilize this template and place this in focus mode, or you could place it elsewhere, but I'll show you specifically how to place it in focus mode at the bottom of lesson pages. Make sure that you publish this template when you're done. I'm not gonna click update because I didn't make any changes, and I'll head back to my dashboard. The third and final piece, and this is the part that you can customize a lot. Um, I'm using what's called the code snippets plugin. It allows you to add custom PHP code snippets um, without needing to edit any files or do any changes to your uh, child theme. Um, and you don't have to get as much into the code and it's a little bit safer of a way to manage your PHP code snippets. So I created one called Add Course Feedback Button. So I'll briefly explain this code. It's only a couple of lines. Um, if you don't know PHP code, it might look intimidating. Um, and you might want to consult the developer, but there's a lot of different what are called hooks that LearnDash gives us where we can insert different things in different places in LearnDash templates. And so basically this action hook down here, there's an action hook right here that's named LearnDash Lesson Content Tab Listing After. So this is going to place things after the Lesson Content Tab content, which is basically just your general content that you're going to write for a lesson. So that is how I am getting it to this button here to show up right after the last piece of content that I've written in the lesson and before these buttons here. Now, there are a lot of different actions that LearnDash has. So you can place this in a lot of different places. You can place it below uh, these buttons here underneath. You can place it, if you have comments on your lesson, you can place it below that. You can place it all the way at the very top um, above this title. I believe there's one for after this title. Um, you can place things up in the header in focus mode, in the sidebar, a lot of different places. Um, just consult a developer if you need help with which one to use. But once you decide which action you're going to use here, essentially you create your function, and this is the name of your function right here. It needs to match this exactly, because basically we're saying we want to take this named function and insert it into this area in LearnDash's template. And this named function right here is what we've got up here. So the way that we insert an Elementor template using PHP code is we need to go to our 
templates and we go to save templates. So when we go here, notice that every single template has a short code. So what I did was I found my course feedback request section, which all it has is that one button that's going to pull up our pop-up. I copied this short code. And then here in this code, I'm saying echo apply short codes. And then I put in that elementary short code right there. Um, and then, like I said, this is going to, this is going to get executed with this action and do it in, in the template, in the learn dash template in this particular spot. So um, again, lots of flexibility here. You can do it in a lot of different places. When you're done, if you're using code snippets, I would recommend just running this on the front end. It doesn't need to run on the back end. So choose this option here for only run on the site front end. And then you would save changes and activate this code. And once you do that, it tells Learn Dash to run that function, which is going to execute the Elementor short code, which outputs our single button. And then on that button, we tell it to open up our pop-up, which gets you this. And I'll go ahead and submit this, and you'll see that there's a little message. It says, feedback received. Thanks for letting us know. And then if I come back into Elementor, there's a new option for submissions. Again, this is an Elementor Pro feature, and this is still in beta, but I do think it's enabled by default. Um, so here you'll see that that I just submitted. It says, so cool. It tells me what page it was on. The lesson was called Focus Mode Sidebar Styles. Um, and it's got our date and time that it was submitted here. So all of our submissions will show up right here in LearnDash, as well as send an email to the admin. And here's just a quick look at what that email looks like. So we've customized the subject line to be LDX training course feedback. We're sending it to support at LDX training, um, LDX.training. And then here we've got the feedback. Um, this is so cool. This is what the user typed in to that box. And then we've got our name. We've got the email. These are the hidden fields that only the admin sees. And then these are the extra metadata fields down here that we uh, selected and told Elementor that we want this information as well. So it's the date, the time, and then the page URL. And this page URL tells us um, exactly which lesson they were on. So that's how we do it. And this right here, I will sh uh, show you just real quick that this changes each time because we're using the post title. So here we are on focus mode sidebar styles. That's the lesson name. If we click here to where to add custom CSS, and we scroll to the bottom and we click feedback, it changes our lesson name to where to add custom CSS. So I thought that was a nice little touch to show that, to remind the user that they are providing suggestions or feedback on that specific lesson. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're able to, uh, to implement it somewhere or if you've come up with even some additional fun things to do or, or creative ways to display it. I'd love to know. Thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next one.